Today we're doing native corn one. This is, uh, and we're going to do a native corn two. It was supposed to be in a couple of weeks, but we're moving it up to next week. Um, and the reason we're doing that is that just to keep it like, you know, a little continuity to what we're doing. I don't know how we ended up with that schedule, but we did. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a genetic, uh, it's a genetic uh, mutation. So they came across a corn that was not able to convert the sugars that are in corn into starch because starch is much more complex. So then they came up with the sweet corn and then they bred different kinds of sweet corn to have what we have today. And I think the, um, the, the sweet corn that's grown around here, they call it peaches and, peaches and cream, I think. Peaches and cream. It's a bicolor, so it's white and yellow. Yeah, and it is, it's delicious, no doubt. I love, love sweet corn too. But sweet corn, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have the nutritional value that you would get in a flint corn. And the other part about sweet corn is you can't store it. Like you can store it, you know, for a little while. If you let it dry on the stock, uh, you get something that looks similar to this. It kind of looks like this, because this looks like a sweet corn, but I don't think it's a sweet corn either. I'll pass that around. But how many of you know where, yes? I just want to say, when you're ordering corn in like seed catalogs, yeah. most of the time it is sweet corn. Yeah. And um, there are heritage varieties of sweet corn. And most recipes, like even like in cookbooks, like old timey, start with like bringing your pot of water to a boil and then harvesting your corn because the, uh, the sugars turn to starch. As soon as that corn is harvested, the sugars turn to starch. So then plant scientists have messed with that and then you get like a, your double sweet corn. Yeah. And now they're on to triple sweet corns in the seed catalogs. Triple and sweet, what does that mean? It just means they hold on to their sugars longer, where oh. the sugars turn to starch slower. Okay. And that's how you end up with uh, sweet corn in like the dollar store. You ever see sweet corn in the dollar store? Uh -huh. Isn't that the weirdest? <laughs> uh, they're like plastic wrapped in the dollar store and, uh, and they hold on to their sweet because they're into this triple sweet category now. And it's just, it's all weird. This corn, the, the corn category is all weird. Oh but no. the peaches and cream is still an heirloom variety that you can still get. But yeah. they always say to, um, to uh, like boil, like literally start your water first and then go harvest your corn because you want to put it in there. You want to blanch it right away or, or cook it right away before yeah. it blanch, starches. Blanch yeah. yeah. Blanching, like blanching, just shocking it in hot water and then boiling water will, uh, will, will make the sugar stay sugar. And yeah. then you can keep the cold corn into the fridge. And yes. I do that often. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I never even heard of triple sweet yeah, corn. Yeah, it's just like the seed catalog. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. So it's quite different, see? So when you're looking at corn, um, there's thousands of varieties of corn. And I'm sure there's probably more than thousands <laughs> that we don't even know about because corn cross-pollinates so readily. And so you have, uh, remember we talked, uh, when, when we were talking about uh, seed saving, there was a, another category of seed saving, I called it land race, do you remember that? No? Land race is sort of, uh, it's the, the varieties of corn or seeds that you will find that are within small communities or in groups, like when you go to a, a community, let's say wherever you're from, and there's farmers there who've been um, growing this particular variety of corn or beans for a very long time. Thanks. And that is uh, that they don't sell in the uh, seed catalogs. That's called land race. So corn. Who knows where corn came from? Somebody. Where did corn evolve? Mexico. Yes, I knew you would know. Uh, so it comes from Mexico. Uh, southern Mexico and according to archaeological evidence they're saying that uh, it, you know where uh, Dio, Dio Sente is? Dio Sente? That is the grass. So corn is actually a grass. Hard to believe. It belongs to a family called Poaceae which is the grass family. Uh, just like our wild rice that we harvest here. That is also a grass. And so 
when um, when I talk about corn and rice, the wild rice that we would have eaten, um, we didn't certainly didn't uh, genetically select for the corn that's in this region uh, until it was first brought here, right? So that was probably around 2,000, 3,000. Some people say longer than that. I know that in Ontario they're saying around 2,000 about 2,000 years that they have evidence because they had large, large communities that they were um, they were growing corn to, to feed the people. And some of their villages were 30,000 people. That's huge. We didn't have anything like that here. Uh, our groups were smaller, uh, but in Ontario that wasn't uncommon. So diocente, which is a grass, and when you go to, uh, when you, if you go to Mexico, you'll see that. There'll be corn growing and there'll be some tio sente growing in the fields around it. So do they cross-pollinate? Yes, <laughs> they do. They cross-pollinate. Uh, they're, they're able to because they're from the same family. They're able to because they have the same number of chromosomes. And they, um, and I guess you could, that's crossing it back over to its original seed. I don't know what it would do to the seed or what it would do to the corn, but um, there's so many varieties of corn. And, they, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing. I think um, if you have different varieties that will work in this region, obviously we want that, that particular variety to be here. This here, the, uh, the Abenegi or Wabanagi flint, Roy Callis flint. This was uh, grown here because of the short uh, growing season. Many people said, oh no, you can't grow corn here because it'll never work. Corn needs to have a long growing season. But this in fact was grown here. This is the 85 day corn. There are 60 day corn as well. You can get that they literally will grow from seed to from the time they pop up till they're ready to eat at 60 days. And they're not, they're not hybrids, they're actual heirloom varieties of corn. So the flint was chosen uh, by the uh, indigenous people because they have this hard, hard crust, this hard shell, makes it easy. If you look at the different, the corn, the second corn that I, if I, that I sent around, you'll notice that it didn't seem that hard. I think that I, I've even been able to, like, I can crack it with my teeth. Like, I can, I can't crack these with my teeth without hurting. <laughs> it hurts when I put it in my mouth and try to crack it. And then you have these, uh, like the rose, the Abenegi rose corn that we grew right there. Remember we planted, um, for the 215 children, that is all flower corn. And you can kind of feel it when you feel the corn, it's soft. It doesn't have that um, kind of that hard, hard rock feeling that these have. I want to play around with the, um, with the different kinds of corn. I brought this thing here. What's that? You can boil all that corn and eat it? You could do any of these, yes. Yeah. Yeah, now this one here though, if you just boil it, it's still going to have this outer, uh, the outer shell, the hull, like a white corn flower. That's really nice. And then of course, this was just corn that I got from um, uh, Spearville uh, Mill. And I just wanted to see what kind of corn and corn they had that was dried corn. And it feels really light and I have a feeling it's either it might be a dent corn. You know what a dent corn is? Dent corn is what's normally grown for feed. And I think they call it dent corn because if you look at the top of the kernel, there's always a little dent in the top. And that's to do with the sugar and the starch content. There's some starch, but there's some sugar in it too. And so this is what's fed to, the, uh, to livestock. Farmer's corn. Field corn, I think, is what they call it. But it looks soft, too. And it is. It's soft like um, like that flower corn. Cow corn. Cow corn, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cow corn. Yeah. Fe 
field corn, uh, feed corn. So my father always says, oh, that's no good, that's cow corn. It's all good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they would say that, but I, I guess it has to do with, yeah. right. No, but you can eat it. Really? Yeah, you, you can, can eat, eat it. it? Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, you can. So I heard about some groups in Mexico that make um, like a corn al alcohol, like kind of like beer. Beer? Like long distance running. Mm -hmm. Which is really funny because beer can be a first sport. You can gel packs in for like. Um, and Mexicans are drinking beer. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but do you, is there evidence of any like um, corn-based alcohols made here, or like? Something? I haven't I haven't heard of it, but I don't know why it wouldn't have happened, and it probably would have been um, you know not just corn, but I would think um, the alcohol from like even maple syrup, you know, if it accidentally started fermenting. I think, I say accidentally because I feel like some of these things were were happy accidents, right? People found out, they were like, oh, look, it's all foamy, but hmm, taste it. <laughs> it tastes pretty good, right? And then you go, oh, I feel pretty happy right now, or I feel lightheaded or whatever. I don't know, but I think it would be something that would be accidental. But yeah, they... Uh, or maybe they learned it, who knows? Maybe they learned it through trading knowledge because there was a lot of knowledge that was transferred from group to group. So yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. When they stopped, when they came in, they had talked about some sort of election, kind of, we did the extraction seminar with you the other day. And they had one, it was in a mason jar, and I can't remember it was that, like, uh, I can't remember if it was leaves or if it was roots or whatever, but it was like all red. And they would turn, up, turn, turn the mason jar upside down and leave it in one spot. And it was supposed to be similar to drinking alcohol. It wasn't alcohol, but it was, it gave you the effects of it. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I can't remember exactly what it was. But, but it was from this region? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I can't remember who the speaker was either, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> We need to find out. That sounds interesting. It could have been green. Who knows? Oh, okay. <laughs> it was somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, uh, there was, I think there, of course, there's evidence that alcohol was made here long before the settlers arrived here. And that was one of the, um, I call it a racist mythology because you hear some mythology about natives can't handle alcohol. I mean, people have heard that mythology, right? Yeah, yeah, it's sad, but some people actually believe that, that natives cannot drink alcohol. And uh, one of my lab partners <laughs> actually said to me, these are, in, in, you know, supposed to be educated people. He said, uh, yeah, that's because uh, you guys didn't have any alcohol until the Europeans got here. And I'm like, no, I said alcohol's been made for a very long time. I think every culture made alcohol, and we had one that we called it bees beer. Does everyone, anyone know about bees beer? Yeah. Hmm? No, it was made out of uh, uh, like uh, barley, like you use for um, uh, like pot barley for making soup. So they would roast it in a frying pan and then molasses. So it was like molasses beer. You put it in a jug and you put the, uh, put the uh, barley grains in there. And then, um, but the barley grains, they, they called it bees beer because you, they said you could see the bees working, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they look like little bees going around in circles. Do you remember those? Yeah. They used to make beer. Mm -hmm. Home brew. Home brew. I told her not to bother it because it was poisonous because, and we believed him because it was bubbling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>